Hi there, good evening, and welcome to episode number 85 of Tetricky TV. My name is Rob Yates, I'm one of the founders of Tetricky, and tonight falls part of our 260 episode series that we are going to be bringing to you on uh, on Facebook, Instagram and Snapchat and YouTube over the course of 2017. All of these evening's topics are around uh, performance acceleration, uh, business development, business growth, personal growth, personal development, and, and generally how you can get to your goals and your definitions of success faster than you currently are doing it on your own. This evening I want to talk about uh, something that is, is dear to my heart. Have you ever wondered what the linguistic impact is on the psychology of somebody uh, in terms of how it is you talk and um, and the level of complexity that you speak with when it is that you choose to communicate with some form of end user uh, um, who in your B2B or B2C or B2G environment has, um, has, has probably purchased something from you. Um, what do you think about that? See, the chances are at this point in time, you're probably a little bit lost with what I just asked. The, the reason for that is that for your business to be successful and for you to be more successful now, you need to stop talking in such a smart way. Here's the thing, that, is that as we get more uh, clever as human beings and businesses, we learn new things and we become more advanced with our ability to speak, our ability to, or maybe not more advanced, maybe we call, become more complex, we become more aware of, of difficult, difficult words or longer words, more complex words. We become aware, aware of more acronyms, um, maybe sh more shortcuts of, of saying the same thing. Um, and and as we often become more educated, this happens, and, and then we go and chuck this this uh, use of words around in all of our uh, combination, in all of our communication. Sorry, and you know somebody said to me the other day, I I'll revert to you. Um, now, now I'm uh, I'm English. I was born and raised in England. In fact, I was born and raised in Oxford, which is where the Oxford English Dictionary comes from. And I thought revert. What on earth are they talking about? Only to find out the revert is, an, is another word for reply. Um, could they not just say I'll reply to you or that I will get back to you? You see, if you want to be understood, you have to ensure that the lowest common denominator in your food chain understands what it is you're saying. So think about your business and your world for a second. Who is the lowest common denominator that you engage with? I'm going to guess that probably it's a security guard, uh, a cleaner, uh, maybe a, a receptionist, or, or maybe you, you sell uh, your products, your services to... Um, uh, to people who struggled to finish high school and, and work on a building site. And you see, here's the thing, is that we end up communicating by accident to those people using our complex, smart words and phrasings and end up confusing the living daylights or intimidating them because often those people are not brave enough to ask the question of, well, what is it that you mean? We end up becoming um, the opposite of customer focused because um, if we're customer focused, our customers and we have customers who we employ because our employees are customers and customers who give us money, um, who, who buy our products, um, do not actually understand what it is we're talking about and therefore do not deliver on what we think we've said in the way in which we think we've said it. 
So if you want your business to be truly successful, we have to serve and communicate with all people through 360 degrees in our business and our life. So that may well go from children to old people to people who've not finished high school to maybe people who've got a master's degree and communicate with them with one message in a way in which all of them using words in which all of them will understand and be able to execute be able to action do something with um, and, and, and in my experience currently in in working in the in the corporate world is is the corporate world is trying to have this battle with itself you see, internally in the business world, they've got what I refer to as MBA language, which is just basically my flippant way of describing uh, complex business language. And internally in their communications, that's the type of language which they use. In fact, actually, if you're a small business owner and you haven't worked in the corporate world for a while, find, a, find an opportunity to go and spend a few days in the corporate world and you'll find you have to go and learn a whole new dictionary of words, phrases um, and expressions. Um, and then the corporate world struggles because then they have to go and communicate with all these different people and they have to go and try and switch their heads from complex business language into language that's relevant to consumers or to staff who are not as well educated or, or as academically clever as they are. Um, and, and generally speaking, I'm experiencing lots and lots and lots of executives who are failing to communicate effectively over 80% of the time because of the language which they're using and they're trying to switch from one to the other, one to the other, one to the other the entire time. And the human brain is not designed to do that. So what do you need to do? You need to go and drop your smart language. You go and need to use, need to use layman's terms and layman's language. But the lowest common denominator in terms of somebody's level of communication thinking and knowledge can can deal with an action and use that 100% of the time in every single transaction in every part of your business whether or not it is that you ever face a customer you always need to communicate in the words of the customer at the level in which they can understand and they can engage with so what have I experienced by doing that? Well, by, by getting people people to to do that, um, in, in particularly in sales, um, the sales marketing parts of a business, to get everybody in the sales and marketing part of a business to do that, to talk in the only in the customer's language 100% of the time. We've experienced things of anything from a 40% increase in sales volume through to a 270% increase in sales volume in under four months, just through the changing of the language. I also have a passion for adventure sports. For those of you who know me, I love canoeing and I love kayaking and I love mountaineering and, and anything in the outdoors. And, and for those of you who engage in the outdoors, you might be aware that there's a whole series of awards that people can gain towards becoming instructors. And we talk about those in terms of a, a level four or a three star or a um, AIMG or a, um, a, a, an SML or a Woggle or all these other sorts of things and all these acronyms that, that mean something. I, I know what they are. I've played in that world long enough to definitely know what those are. But we use that language when we communicate with our clients and our clients just simply do not understand what it is we're talking about because we're not taking those acronyms and putting them into um, layman's terms. Interestingly, British canoeing at this point in time have chosen to change what they have previously called their four and five star award, and they're calling it the leader award and the advanced leader award. Suddenly, of course, that means something to you. An advanced leader can do advanced things in advanced places. A leader can, can lead you in normal places. It means something to you. You can understand it and engage with it. Whereas a four-star or a five-star, unless you're in the game, what does that really mean? So there's a great example of somebody who has taken a step in the right direction. So there's my thought. My challenge for you is for the next week to simplify your language and talk only in the language um, and the type of language used by the people who are the least able in terms of their use of language. 
do it, track it, and notice how the actions from across everybody in the organization increase significantly and notice how you bring the entire organization together in doing so, the entire business together. Because you see, the person who's got an MBA will understand what it is you're saying, as will the cleaner, as will the receptionist, as will the salesperson, as will the marketing person, as will the customer. And that means you're going to get a unity, one message that goes out in one way that's understood equally by everybody and is acted on equally by everybody as well. Your business will be seen as a whole. So there's my thought for the evening. My challenge for you is to do just that. Um, let me know how you get on in the comments section. Uh, give me your thoughts. Why not send us a message and, and tell us uh, what it is that you're specifically going to do to take action against this. And um, if nothing else, have a great 24 hours further. I look forward to seeing you at this time in this place. Uh, tomorrow evening, which I believe is, is Friday for me, um, for the last of this week's Tetra Key TVs. And um, I hope that your next working 24 hours further is amazing using simplistic language. Stay well.